hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Epitaph for Lydia. Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. Epitaph for Lydia by Virginia Roth. The exciting story of a missing person who was found by death. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It is late evening in San Francisco and in the spacious living room of an impressive house on Lombard Street a party is in full swing. A tall, keen-eyed man, bored by the noisy music and the chattering people, retreats to the comparative quiet of an adjoining room. Attracted by several modernistic paintings on the wall, he steps over to one for a closer look. Do you like it? Huh? You're Michael Dundas, the detective, aren't you? Well, I'm really an architect, but You were sometime... pointed out to me when you came in. Oh? I'm Lydia Courtney. You don't know me. Well, no, but... Uh, Do you like modernistic art? If it's art, yes. Well, for most of the models look like exercises in children's finger painting. Uh, this one, for instance... Rooftops at sunset. Yes, at least that's what the artist calls it. To me, it looks like a hangover at sunrise. Now, there's one over here. Uh -huh. There's possibilities. Ah, here it is. Just a simple study of some sand dunes. <laughs> Why, what's the matter, Miss Courtney? Oh, I'm afraid I, I don't feel very well. Can I get you anything? No. No, I'll be all right. It's just that... That's a horrible picture. Miss Courtney, I think you'd better sit down. Uh, right over here on the sofa. No. no. I'll be all right, really. I, I'm feeling much better now. Fine. Courtney. Margie. Oh. Miss Courtney. Oh, I knew she'd faint. <clears throat> Lucky I grabbed her before she fell. Now, onto the sofa. Uh, there we are. Lydia! Lydia, aren't you going to jo Oh. What happened? She fainted. Uh, the sun do <laughs> many a one for him shall moon. But none shall, shall know. I, I've forgotten. Hmm, that's no. odd. What? That she should quote from that old ballad. She she was just delirious. She she didn't know what she was saying. Hmm. And I guess Margie doesn't mean anything either. Margie? Yes. Uh, by the way, I think I knew you from someplace, don't I? Yes, I uh, I run a bookstore, Mr. Dundas. I think you've been in it a few times. Oh, that's right. I bought some books and had them sent. Uh, your name is um, Bond, isn't it? Yes, Sally Bond. Uh -huh. Tell me, how'd you burn her at your wrist? Oh, well, there I... Uh, some, uh, some grease splattered on me. I see. Uh, uh, oh, Sally. Yes, Lydia. I, I didn't say anything, did I? No, no, dear. Now, you just lie still. That's right. Can I give you a lift home? That won't be necessary, Mr. Dundas. Our escorts are somewhere in the crowd. They'll drive us back. I see. Uh, just a suggestion, Miss Bond. Yes? I think it'd be wise for you to stay at Miss Courtney's home tonight. I will. You see, we live together. Oh? Uh, don't worry about me, Mr. Dundas. After tonight, I, I think I'll be all right. Of course. Lydia's going to be just fine. I guess you're right, Mirabel. Puzzles seem to pursue me, don't they? I go to a party for relaxation, and up bounces a prettier problems I've come across in years. A painting, a song, a woman who faints, and that poetry she quoted. Oh, am I boring you? Ah, uh, uh, I get it. That look in your eyes. L'amour. 
Time for a rendezvous. Yeah. Huh? Oh, but it's 1.30 in the morning. Uh, okay, okay. Stop pawing your whiskers, you Rue. I'll let you out. Come on. Up we go. Margie, I'm always thinking of you, Margie. Da, not a bad night. Peaceful, nice moon. Okay, pal, I guess. Wait a minute. Those were gunshots. Come on. It should be, should be somewhere around here. What? Oh. So when I was telling you about my hitable, Lydia Courtney, and she's dead. No. <laughs> But, Inspector, that's all I know. That's the whole story. Can't be. Doesn't make sense, Mike. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy, but true. Oh. Uh, did your boys find anything that might help? No. No. Say, what do you think Lydia Courtney was doing around here? I think she was on her way to see me. Mm-hmm. You see, when she spoke to me at the party, I had the feeling she wanted to talk to me about something that worried her. Yeah. Then she fainted, and when she came to, the time for opening up had passed. Sally Bond was around. Anybody else? No, their escort, Sally's brother Bill, and a fellow named Jay Stanton were among the crowd in the living room. I was introduced to them before I left. I see. Well, we'll check them all, and we'll begin with Sally Bond. <laughs> You don't seem very surprised to learn of your friend's death, Miss Bunn. Well, I, uh, I've already heard about it, Inspector. Oh, neither the radio nor the papers have broken the story. My, my brother Bill here told me. Oh, brother Bill told you. Yes. And how did you know, Brother Bill? Well, I'm a special feature writer for the Clarion. I'm doing a series on crime, and I happened to be at a nearby precinct when the flash came in. Uh Uh-huh. Naturally, I rushed over to tell Sally. Naturally. Um, Mind if I ask a few questions, Inspector? No, Mike. Go right ahead. Sally, what time did you and Lydia get home last night? About 12. I thought you were going to keep your eye on her. Well, I, I was upset. I took a sleeping pill and gave one to Lydia. Apparently, she didn't take hers. She she must have slipped out after I fell asleep. I see. Do you know what was bothering her? No. All I can tell you is that for the past three days, ever since Tuesday night, she was just a bundle of nerves. What happened Tuesday night? I don't know. Lydia went out at 8 o'clock. I heard her take her car out of the garage and drive off. But when she got back, I couldn't say I... I was asleep. And on Wednesday morning, you noticed something wrong. Yes, Lydia was very jumpy. I asked her where she'd been the night before. She wouldn't tell me. Do you know who might have been with her? No. It wasn't Brother Bill, was it? No, it wasn't. Well, where were you that night? Well, why, well, I, I was over at uh, Jay Stanton's house. We were we were playing gin till about one o'clock. Then I went home. Oh, Sally, does anyone else live here with you? Well, our handyman, Al Kemper, occupies the room over the garage. Mm, well, perhaps he can tell us when Lydia returned Tuesday night. Will you take us to him, please? Yes, of course. Follow me. Uh, Inspector. Yeah? You mind if I run along? I have to check in early at the office. Okay, but just remember to stay within reach. You understand? Yes. All right, Sally. Let's go. Is this Lydia's car, Sally? Yes, Mr. Dundas. How about calling the handyman? Certainly. Al! Oh, Al! He may still be asleep. Excuse me, I'll run up and get him. Inspector. Yeah? Take a look at the bumper and the front fender. They've both been straightened. And the fender's been painted quite recently. Mm. Inspector! Yes? Al Kemper is gone. Lydia, dead? Hard to believe, Bill. Sally, no? Yes, Jay. Well, kid, the police will probably hound the life out of her. Uh Uh-huh. They were doing a good job of it when I left her. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay. Yes? 
I, uh... I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Sure. What is it? Well, it, it, it seems that something happened Tuesday night. I mean, Lydia was out with someone, and that person may be the leading suspect. Well? I told the police that I was playing gin with you till one o'clock. What? They asked me where I was. I couldn't tell them I was just cruising around in my car that night. But you've Bill... got to back me up, Jay. You've got to. You're putting me on an awful spot, Bill. I know, I know, but I, I, I just said the first thing that popped into my head. Now I've got to stick to it. I don't know. Not only for me, Jay, for Sally. Well... You will? Okay. Thanks, Jay. Thanks a lot. I'll never forget this, never. Just one thing before you go, Bill. What's that? If I find out you're involved in Lydia's death, I'll hand you over to the police so fast it'll make your head spin. <laughs> Here we are, Inspector. Yeah. <clears throat> Say, this is quite a house Stan's got, Mike. Looks like it's all glass. Practically. Rather an extreme functional design. Plenty of light and air. Hmm. It's a regular goldfish bowl. <clears throat> yes? Oh, hello, Dennis. Come in. Thanks. Uh, Stanton, this is Inspector Prevost of the police. How do you do? How are you? I've uh, been rather expecting you. Yeah? How's Bill, that? Bill Bond called me a little while ago. He uh, told me of Lydia's death. Oh, he did, eh? I wonder if there's anyone he hasn't told. Well, I was a very close friend of Lydia's, as well as her attorney. I, I guess he thought I should know. Uh-huh. Stanton, we've been told by Sally Bond that Lydia had been acting queerly lately. Do you know why? No. We all commented on it, but she wouldn't tell anyone what was bothering her. I see. By the way, Stanton, where were you last Tuesday night? Oh, right here. Bill dropped in early in the evening, and we talked, played cards. He left about, uh, oh, one o'clock. Mm-hmm. Stanton, did Lydia make a will? Yes. Would you like to see it? You mean you have it with you? Well, not exactly. It's in my safe. You see, this is my office as well as my home. Oh, well, you probably remember the contents of the will. Tell me, who benefits by Lydia's death? Well, outside of certain small bequeaths, where the bulk of the estate goes to Sally Bond. Uh, 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 oh. Hello? Hello, Mike. Inspector Prevost. Oh, what's the idea? I told you I wanted to catch a little... Shut up, I'm dead. I know, I know, but listen. Is Sally Bond there? Huh? What is this, a gag? Of course not. After I left you, I decided to talk to that girl again. Well, I went over to her house and she wasn't there. Huh? I thought maybe she'd gone to see you. No. Inspector. Yes? There's a chance she went down to the bookstore she runs, and maybe... Yes? Better drive over here and pick me up. I want to go down there with you. <laughs> That's funny, Mike. The door to the store is open, and yet nobody's here. Mm. Listen, wait. What was that? Quick, Inspector. The door behind the desk. Right. There, Inspector. On the floor near the table. Sally. Oh, oh. Mr. Dundas, Inspector. Take it easy, kid. Oh, oh my head. What happened, Sally? I came down to the store. I, I just taken off my hat when I heard a noise in the stock room. Yes. I opened the door. Someone standing behind it hit me over the head. Th that's all I can remember. I see. Probably got in through the rear window. Sally, why did you come down here? Well, on Wednesday, Lydia gave me a sealed envelope. She, she didn't tell me what was in it. All she said was that I should keep it for her down here. Mm -hmm. If anything happened to her, I was to open it and read what was inside. Then I was to decide what to do. Where did you put it? In the top middle drawer of my desk. Inspector, will you see if it's there? Right. Well? It's 
gone, Mike. Uh-huh. It would be. Sally, we've been informed that you are virtually the sole heir to Lydia's estate. Oh? You don't seem at all surprised. No, I'm not. You see, several years ago, I happened to save Lydia's life in an automobile accident. Well, Lydia was very grateful. She wanted me to give up my job and come to live with her. Mm-hmm. I told her I hated being, being idle, so she loaned me some money and I bought this store. I, I suppose she thought she hadn't done enough for me. And that's why she left me everything. Well, after all, you saved her life. Uh, one other thing. Yes? That burn on your wrist. You said some grease splattered on it. But it'd hardly have happened like that. It's in one solid area, not spotted. You're right. On Wednesday morning at breakfast, Lydia was reading the newspaper. Just when I was handing her some coffee, she gave a start and jostled my hand. The coffee spilled on my wrist. Huh? You say she was reading the paper? Yes. Is that paper still in the house? Probably. We usually let them accumulate for a week before throwing them out. Come on, Inspector. I think this is the break we've been waiting for. <laughs> Here they are, Mr. Dundas, the papers for the past week. Thanks, Sally. Uh, now, let's see. Thursday, Monday. Here we are. Here we are, Inspector Wednesday. Good. Uh, now to find the page with the darkest and biggest coffee stain. Let's see. Ah, ah, here it is. Now, what could have startled her? The United Nations and Special Session, Dry Goods Convention, Urge... Oh, this must be the one. Girl missing. Oh, what does it say, Mike? Mrs. Thomas Kaysen of 624A Flyshacker Avenue reported to the Bureau of Missing Persons that her niece, Margie, 14, left home last night and is missing. The girl left her house at about half past ten following a dispute with her aunt. A search has been instituted by the authorities. There's a picture, too, Margie Kaysen. Yeah, yeah, the missing Margie. But what do you think... Uh... Oh, wait a minute, Inspector. I've just had a brainstorm. Huh? That ballad Lydia quoted, it just came to me. It goes, Many a one for him shall moon, but none shall know where he has gone. Over his white bones, when they are bare, the wind shall blow forevermore. Well, does, does that mean anything to you, Mike? You bet it does. It means that Margie's aunt is going to have two unexpected visitors... Come on, Inspector. Why don't you two guys beat it? Go on, let me alone. But, Mrs. Kaysen, we want to talk to you about your missing niece, Margie. Margie? She ain't missing. Go on, get out of here. I don't think she knows what she's talking about, Mike. Uh, maybe she does, and maybe... Wait a minute. Get a load of the stock of liquor on that table. Yeah. Scotch, rye, bourbon... That stuff must have cost a small fortune. Uh Uh-huh. And where did she get the money for it? This place makes Tobacco Road look like the Waldorf. Inspector. Yeah? Take a look at that purse she's holding. It's just bulging. Yeah. Mrs. Kaysan, may I look at your pocketbook? No. I shall let you look at it. Because I want to look inside. Hey, give me that purse! Uh, I thought so. It's stuffed with bills and big ones at that. Must be about $1,000 here. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Mrs. Kaysan, where'd you get it? Come on, come on, talk. Um, someone sent it to me. Who? I don't know. It came in the mail Thursday with a letter. Have you still got the letter? No, I tore it up and threw it away. Do you remember what the letter said? Yeah. It said I shouldn't worry about my niece. And if I didn't ask questions, I could keep the money. Oh. So you were smeared with some dough and you called off the search, huh? So what? The kid was nothing but a little tramp anyway. Well, you dirty... Easy, easy, Inspector. Miss Kaysen... What do you think Margie was going when she ran away? Uh, probably to her friend Betty's. That's where she always went when we had a fight. I see. And she never reached her friend's house, did she? No. Where does Betty live? Uh, over at 2142 Wawona Avenue, near the beach. Oh. There's a vacant sand lot on that block. Inspector, we've got a job to do. A job of digging. <laughs> I got a lot of men here, Mike, but they haven't found anything so far. Keep the matter, Inspector. I'm sure... What's the matter? A bit of luck, I think. Look at that mongrel dog over at the corner. Yeah. He's digging in the sand like mad. Uh-huh. Come on. Right. 
Why, the must run away, Mike. Uh, that's okay. I, I got my eye on where he was digging. Ah, here it is. You see the hole? Uh-huh. Okay, give me your shovel. Right, here you are. Thanks. Now, pray. <clears throat> Maybe it was only a bone the mutt was after. Uh, maybe. Do you, do you want me to take over, Mike? No. Guess I can. Inspector, look. Good Lord. Ah, the poor kid. Under the sand. And over her white bones when they are bare, the wind shall blow forevermore. <laughs> Did you get the coroner's report on Margie, Inspector? Yeah, Mike, it was just as you figured. The kid was dead before she was buried. Uh-huh. That's fairly easy now to reconstruct what happened. It is? Not for me. Well, the only conclusion which fits all the facts is that Lydia's car hit Margie and killed her. Terrified, Lydia and whoever was with her buried the body in the sand. Well, why? After all, it certainly wasn't deliberate. It wasn't murder. True. But a conviction on at least a reckless driving charge is fairly probable. Okay, go on. Well, Lydia couldn't stand what she'd done. That's why she gave that sealed envelope to Sally. Probably contained a full account of what happened. Kind of a confession to lighten her guilt, huh? Yes. By the way, how did the killer know about it? Probably through Lydia herself. Lydia? Yes. She must have tried to forestall her murder by threatening the killer with disclosure by means of the envelope. But the killer was desperate and made sure Lydia would never talk. Exactly. Huh? Just a minute. Hello? Inspector Prevost speaking. What? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He has, hey? Well, of course. Certainly, certainly. Bring him down right away. Mike, a couple of the boys just picked up the handyman, Al Kemper. They did? Yeah, and get this. One of the men recognized him as an old con with a record as long as your arm. <laughs> All right, Kemper, come on. Now, stop stalling. Why did you run away? Well... Uh... Early this morning when Miss Barnes' brother came to see her, I was out in the yard near the kitchen. Yeah? The window was open, and I heard him tell his sister about Miss Courtney being dead. I figured me with my record, it wasn't healthy to stick around. You're lying. I'm not, I tell you. You are. Just, uh, just a minute, Inspector. Kemper, where were you last Tuesday night? Well, I was in a neighborhood bar until about 11.30, and then I beat it home and hit the hay. Did you hear Miss Courtney come home? Yeah. When she drove in, she woke me up. Was there anyone with her? Yeah. Who was it? Well, I don't know. I heard Miss Courtney's voice, but whoever was with her was whispering. Did you hear what they said? Well, not much of it. Miss Courtney was scared. She kept saying something was all wrong. The other person kept telling her she had to keep her mouth shut about it. Anything else? No. Wait, 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 wait. There was just one other thing. Yes? The other person said something kind of funny. Let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I could never stand it. Never. I'd go insane in a month. That's just what was said. Oh, not very much to go on, is there, Mike? On the contrary, Inspector. I think it's the key to the whole case. The key? Yes. Get Sally Senton and Bill down here right away. What for? I'm going to trap the murderer. <laughs> Why did you call us down here? Okay, okay, quiet, please, quiet. All right, Mike. Thanks, Inspector. I called you all down here because there's been a new development in the case, and I'll need your help. Now, will you follow me, please? Oh, oh, right. I don't see anything. Where are we going? Upstairs, Brother Bill. Hurry up, come on. Get in the elevator. Okay. That's a tight squeeze, but I think we can make it. There we are. All right, Inspector. Close the door and take us up. Right. You all right, Sally? Uh, yes, Jay. Well, what's the matter, Inspector? I don't know, Mike. Hmm, funny. We, we seem to be stuck. It's a fine how do you do between floors, too. Keep your shirt on, Brother Bill. <laughs> That's funny. It won't start. Now, don't worry, folks. We'll probably get going in a minute. I, uh, I'd like to get out. Yeah, how about it? I said I'd like to get out, please. I can't stay in here. I can't. 
feelings. You don't understand. You don't understand! I'm afraid I do, Stanton. You murdered Lydia, didn't you? Yes. Yes. I killed her. I killed her. I killed her. All right, Inspector. You can take us down now. You missed me, didn't you, Mahitabo? Mike, will you put that darn cat down? <laughs> relax, Inspector, relax. Relax, he says. Don't you think it's time that you answered a few questions? Uh, okay. Uh, excuse me, Mahitabo. What do you want to know, Inspector? How did you figure out Jay Stanton's claustrophobia? His fear of being hemmed in? Well, first of all, when we visited Stanton, his house seemed strange. It was almost all glass. You yourself called it a goldfish bowl. Yeah, that's right, so he did. Then he had his office and his home, not in a building where he'd have to take an elevator every day. Uh-huh. Well, of course, at the time we saw him, it didn't mean too much. It was just odd. Yeah, but when were you sure? When Kemper told us what he'd overheard. As you recall, the person with Lydia said, I could never stand it. Never. I'd go insane in a month. Yes, but how could you know what he referred to? Well, obviously, Lydia and Stanton were talking of what they had done to Margie. The only way Stanton could terrify her into silence was by pointing out a probable jail sentence if they were caught. Uh-huh. Thus, what Stanton said could only refer to what jail would mean to him. He would go insane because of his claustrophobia. I see. And when you tied that up to his glass house, having his office there, you had him all wrapped up. Yes. Oh, what's, what's the matter, Mahedable? Ah, uh, rubbing your whiskers again, huh? <laughs> you Casanova. No, nope, I'll let you out. Mike, will you stop bothering with that cat? Sorry, Inspector. There are some things which are much more important than crime. And so closes tonight's Crime Club book, Epitaph for Lydia based on a story by Virginia Rath. James Erthine did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Sidney Smith played Mike. Jack McBride was the inspector. Julie Stevens was Sally. Ted Osborne was heard as Jay. Mason Adams was Bill. Bryna Rayburn was Lydia. And Brad Barker was Mehita Bell, the... Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting... Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the exciting story of a crown that rested easily on the head of death. It's called The Corpse Wore a Wig by George Bagby. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank <laughs> you.